Welcome to The Topic. I'm Todd Duplantis. This is a show where we highlight Houston Community College, our students, our programs, and our reach into the community. Hope you've had a great summer so far. We're wrapping up the summer. The show's been on a bit of a hiatus while well, we had a little bit of a break, but it's good just to dive right into it. And we're very excited about our topics for today. Before we get to that, I want to remind all of you, first off, thank you all for joining us on Facebook Live and YouTube. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 1 p.m. You can also catch the rebroadcast on HCC TV. You can also find us in social media. Look for us as Houston Community College District. Follow us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you get notifications when we have brand new shows posted. Now, we're all familiar with the term STEM for science, technology, engineering, and math, but STEAM adds art to the equation and is opening new doors for our students. We're joined today by HCC's Chair of Consumer Arts and Sciences, Andrea Bonner, Fashion Merchandising Coordinator Cheryl Whitaker, and Extended Reality Lab and Studio Director Ruben Duran. All are here to discuss how fashion and XR collaborate. Good afternoon, everyone. How are y'all doing this afternoon? Good afternoon. Doing well. Great. Great to be here. It's good to see all of you with us. Um, Andrea, we'll start with you. Uh, why don't you give us an overview of the fashion program at HCC, and in particular, the fashion promotion class? Sure. Um, HCC is fortunate to have a fashion design department as well as a fashion merchandising department. A lot of people think of fashion, they think of clothes, accessories, things like that. But um, the merchandising department, which, and you mentioned the fashion promotions depart, uh, program is part of that. Um, they talk about the business side of fashion. So the promotions, fashion promotions class, which I used to teach and now is under the hands of uh, very able-bodied Cheryl Whitaker, Professor Whitaker, they're the class when you talk, our collection students produce a fashion collection. That class is the class that actually produces the fashion show. So as you know, last year with COVID happening, there weren't any fashion shows any, anymore. So um, luckily Cheryl was able to pivot very easily with the help of Ruben and his group. And she'll talk a little bit more about how she was able to do that, which is very exciting. Cheryl, I imagine though with um when you're learning a trade or a skill and going to a community college, and if it's a workforce program, you not only want to learn the trade, but you want to learn how to market yourself and eventually maybe own your own business or promote, in this case, your clothing line. And it sounds like your program really gets students prepared for that with not just learning the craft, but learning what it takes to get it out there to people. Absolutely. And one of the important things about all of this that every student should embrace is learning technology. Because if you are promoting yourself, you need to have some, some knowledge about technology to put it out there because we're all, you know, as much as we hate to admit it, we all live by technology. And so if we're talking about promotion, be it self-promotion or working in that environment, you need to understand the basic items that are available to you to promote your fashion business or any business for that matter. And Ruben, I want to bring you into the conversation. Um, tell us how your lab fits into this and what you're able to offer the fashion program with the technology and quite honestly, all the cool toys you have over there. Thank you, Todd. And our space, the Extended Reality Lab and Studio, is this place in where many of these programs and disciplines actually convene to uh, help the uh, students in those programs and work very closely with the fashion uh, faculty to, in many ways, add value to a student's education by allowing them to learn some of these emerging technologies that we have in the lab. And so that is the part where we actually come in. Cheryl, would the genesis of this be uh, going back to a few years ago when you worked with technology to place all of your collection in a virtual online setting where people and your students can look at all the amazing pieces you have virtually? It, yes, that's part of it because we do have our, um, what do we call it? Our, we have our, our historical collection. Right. Our archive. Uh, but what we've been trying to do, especially in the time of COVID, the unfortunate period, is we're coming up with new ways to present collections. Because typically we would have done our traditional show 
uh, and the learning hub, but what do you do when you can't meet? Yeah. You have to use technology to create a new way of presenting your work. And so with working with Ruben and the team in the XR lab, which they're amazing, um, we were able to show students how to use 3D technology to present collections, things that they'd never really considered before, and to create immersive spaces. And so actually in the fashion industry as a whole, they had to learn how to use technology to present, uh, or otherwise they would have lost all their, their potential business for uh, the 2021 season. So it really... Um, became more of a need more instead of an interest. And from a consumer standpoint, I mean, I, I purchase a lot of my clothes online because I don't feel like going to the mall and trying them on. You know, you know what fits and you figure you'll give it a try. Nowadays, it's free to send it back anyway and get your money back. So from a consumer standpoint, it seems like that's a natural thing because we're all wanting to still buy, but we may not want to go see you to buy it in person. Absolutely. And, and, you know, the interesting thing about that is, is even retailers are looking at technology. They're looking at 3D technology where you could literally try on something in your home. Um, as you all know, when you buy eyeglasses now online, you can literally try them on online by just taking a picture of yourself. And so retailers are having to introduce this technology as well, because at the end of the day, it's how we're going to do business going forward. It's how they're going to remain profitable. Andrea, has this changed the way, I mean, obviously you guys had, had placed the collection online virtually long before COVID. Y'all were working in this direction, but has COVID uh, accelerated what you're doing using technology and particularly the 3D technology for the department? Absolutely. And I was going to comment to that. I just want to commend um, our XR lab with Ruben and, and Cheryl what they're doing. Um, we talked about, you know, you shop online and you, you know, HCC TV has always covered our fashion shows at the hub, but yeah. now we're able to extend our reach to people all over the world that can see our students' collections. So uh, a, a student from ACC, they may be looking at someone in France could look at their collection online, whereas in the past they may not have been able to do that. So um, we're opening up uh, a, a lot of opportunity for our students through this technology that we've incorporated into the classes. So we're excited about that. Ruben, um, having a chance to work with the fashion department, has that enabled to you to purchase new technology that you may have not used before uh, because you have a need now? Yeah, it has indeed. And to us, this is almost like a technologist dream to have passionate faculty that are willing to do so much for their students and then having them come to the lab the students very engaged in the process is, is actually a dream come true for us one two if i were to go back to what andrea uh, just mentioned this past spring uh professor whitaker actually hosted a day when the students uh, were actually inside the immersive fashion show that they created for the collection students. And there were students from Spain, Argentina, that were actually inside that immersive space commenting on the work that the collection students were actually showcasing. Uh, and this is work that was actually done by Professor Whitaker and her class in the lab. And so this is this is this is over exciting for us. It's an exciting time for the fashion department and the XR lab over at Central. Um, we are talking about the fashion industry, about technology, uh, XR, immersive reality, or immersive reality. We're going to talk about how do you do a runway presentation when you can't really have people in person. Well, we did that this year, working with the fashion department here at HCC TV. When we come back, we'll talk about the technology of the runway. We're live on the topic this afternoon. I'm Todd Duplantis. We'll be back right after this. The faculty at HCC represents the best of the city. They're committed to getting our students to their goals. A four-year degree. Workforce training. A better life. HCC. For everyone, anytime, any way. Hey, Bobo. Do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, 
Why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! one day at PE when they were like yelling at me and then you just linked arms with me. I don't think you know how much like that helped me. I finally like knew that I had somebody. We are, we're back live here on the topic this afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Good to have you with us. I'm Todd Duplantis. We're talking about our fashion program, working with technology here at HCC. We've got Andrea Bonner, HCC's Chair of Consumer Arts and Sciences, Cheryl Whitaker, Fashion Merchandising Coordinator, and Ruben Duran, Extended Reality Lab and Studio Director. Welcome back to the show once again. I want to ask you, and I guess we'll start with Andrea once again. I would imagine the COVID pandemic uh, which went a lot longer than we're all imagining, um, provided a lot of challenges for your department. How did XR keep your students moving forward, Andrew? Well, yes, to your point, it did provide a lot of challenges and also some opportunity. Uh, so challenges by way of the fashion design students not being able initially to meet, and it's a very hands-on program. Um, however, on the flip side, our merchandising students were still able to, because um, most of those classes are business and lecture-based, so they were still able to um, do those classes online. We had students that had to go back home to other countries, and they were able to finish Finish their program. So, you know, although it did provide some challenges, it also provided some opportunities. And as well, um, you brought up the XR Lab. They allowed our students to still be able to um, complete their curriculum, um, the things that they learn in the fashion promotions class, which we talked about earlier in an earlier segment um, by producing the virtual fashion show. They were still able to, through Professor Whitaker's class, uh, immerse themselves in that technology that is being used all around the world now. So again, although it provided challenges, we see it as opportunities that are going to continue yeah. and allow our program to get better. Cheryl, did you have students in, you know, HCC is known as having the largest international student body for any community college in the U.S. Did uh, you have students in your class who had to go home because of the pandemic, but still continued working with you virtually? Absolutely. I, I think both Andrea and I had the same, one of the same students. Uh, she actually went home to Turkey. Wow. She was able to still maintain her studies here at the college because we were able to set up uh, lessons as well as assignments that she could also contribute to the project. Um, through working with Ruben, we were able to teach students technologies. Of course, that the, the beneficial part is they could add that to their list of skills and their resume. But in terms of this student, she could log into the immersive space and help contribute to building that space out, which we in turn use in our overall project. Is this something you could have imagined 10, 15 years ago that students would go home to their home country but still continue their studies? No, but that not that the beauty of technology? Yeah. It allows us to travel the world from our home. Ruben, I want to ask you about some of the toys you've got. Uh, Sketch Lab, uh, your 3D technology tool. What exactly is that? So Sketch Lab is a YouTube-like application that allows our students to showcase what you might refer to a digital twin of a garment. And so when the student comes to the lab, they actually use a 3D scanner to scan the garments that they are actually designing in the fashion program. They are able to bring that 3D garment into a sketch fab where others can actually see it is in entirety. They can rotate it. They can actually enlarge it. They can actually go and look at more detail of that garment. And this is a an application that the fashion program is actually using in a, in a very meaningful way. Not only the promotion and collections class, but also Professor Whitaker's Fashion merchandising class is actually bringing 
Entire fashion store seem to sketch five where you can actually walk inside the store in this 3D uh, version of a store. And so this is something that I do know by having meetings with other institutions. Uh, yesterday, we actually were in a meeting with Pratt Institute, one of the, the main uh, uh, top schools for architecture and, and fashion in, in the country, in the world. And indeed, they were actually very impressed by the work that our students are doing based on what we were able to show them from Sketch 5 and the documentary that the fashion program would produce out of Professor Whitaker's class. I was going to ask you, you guys are producing a documentary. Who exactly is doing that? Cheryl? <laughs> uh, well, it's a collaborative effort, of course, between myself and the Fashion Promotions class and the XR Lab. Um, we, we actually debuted the documentary about a month ago. Uh, but it is shot entirely by the fashion promotion students. Uh, and with that, they got to learn some new technology. I'm always excited for students to learn new technology. So they learned about using their smartphones and how to use it with gimbals. And uh, Ruben and his crew were able to um, do a great job of editing. So it was a great project. I'm going to throw a question out there for you. Ruben mentioned something about being able to uh, virtually walk into a store and look at fashions. How far away are we from walking into a virtual mall? Actually, you can do it now. Yeah. Uh, Burberry in particular, the brand, um, they have a setup where you can literally virtually tour one of their stores yes. uh, okay. in Tokyo. I can't remember the exact location, but you can literally walk through the store on your computer and make your selections and check out. Yeah, I've seen that on Facebook. I've seen the advertisement for that. That is pretty cool. I want to talk with you about, I know HCC TV worked with you all this past year um, for one of your fashion shows. Where do you see things going in 2021? I know we're headed back into some troubled waters right now with COVID spikes, uh, but obviously technology is going to continue playing a part. Do you see us doing something in the future, maybe having a mixture of virtual and live person? Where do you see that going? Yeah, I think that there are always going to be people that want to go to a mall or want to go to a fashion show. They want to touch. They want to be in the environment. But um, because of where we are now, and I don't know that we'll ever go back to the normal that we knew before, there's always going to be a mixture of technology involved with that. You'll have Todd that want to, wants to stay at home and watch the runway show, and you'll have Andrea that wants to, to be in person. And yeah. both of those people will be able to experience it and, and get that get the same experience out of it. So I think from now on, we're going to see a, a combination of, of all of those things. Cheryl, from your impression, the student's standpoint on this, are they looking to do some of both? Would they rather do it in person? What do you see from their standpoint? I think initially, uh, I, and I always use this a phrase that students tend to be afraid of technology, like in my generation, they were afraid of math classes. So once you get into it and you embrace the technology that's av available, then they become really invested. And so I think that going forward, we have to consider the new norm. This will be our new norm where Todd can watch it from home and Andrea can be present front row, but you still have that same great experience. Right, right. And Ruben, it sounds like job security on your end. Indeed. <laughs> Do you have you had more departments coming to you now because of COVID uh, outside of fashion that are asking for your assistance and in instruction and in presenting their their uh, programs online? Well, so for us, we hosted many classes and different subjects before, and due to COVID, that has been limited. And so, what we're now doing is working with those departments that are very cutting edge, if you will. At Central, uh, where the fashion department, the construction and architecture uh, COE in different projects with them and so on. So, yes, our, our work has not decreased uh, by any means of the imagination, but the classes that we're hosting live on our different spaces has uh, changed from uh, subjects, if you will, biology and chemistry to hosting uh, the fashion students and, and, and the drafting and so on. 
We've been talking about HCC's fashion program, working with the Excel Studio and Lab. Stay tuned to the topic. We're going to take a short break. When we return, we'll hear about how the lab is working with other programs and community partners. All that and more just after this. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. You can do it here. But I get it, you're busy. And busy people can't have prediabetes. Oh, I read that wrong. They can, okay. Just go to the site. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. If a natural disaster shows up at your doorstep, you can't just turn it away. That's why it's important to prepare for emergencies before they show up. Go to ready.gov plan to find the tools and tips you need and make a plan today. Welcome back to The Topic. We are live this afternoon. I'm Todd Duplantis. Thanks for joining us. If uh, you're watching us on social media, Facebook Live and YouTube, welcome to the show. We're live at 1 p.m. every Tuesday. You can watch us on HCC TV and the rebroadcasts always in social media. Look for us as Houston Community Top College District. We're talking with Ruben Duran, director of HCC's Extended Reality Lab and Studio. We're also joined by Chris Kimball this afternoon. He's a graduate of our Motion Graphics and Visual Special Effects program. Now he's a tutor here at HCC. And we've also been joined by Edwin Bailey of construction company Ganska USA. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Thanks for being here. Let's talk about first off an unmanned vehicle projects that have been working at HCC. Ruben, you want to kick this off? Actually, I would let uh, our uh, FAA certified pilot, uh, Mr. Kimball, uh, address how we are actually uh, using the drones and, and, and then uh, Mr. Bailey as to how in the project that we are collaborating with. Okay, Chris, why don't you get us started and then I'll jump on over to Edwin. Hi, Todd. As a tutor, I have a privilege of helping students reach their media goals. And many times uh, their difficulty is bringing their storyboard to life. They might need a camera move that could require normally 300 pounds of equipment, or we could use this half a pound drone, which just makes things better. The student gets what they want. And on a large scale, this uh, digital twin project with Skanska has brought together everything I've learned as a student and helping other students together in an industry-ready product. Edwin, um, obviously drones playing a big part in the construction industry now. How does this help uh, Skanska with, uh, with using a drone in coordination with HCC? Well, I mean, it really gives us a, a different perspective, you know. So we utilize it for data capture and uh, analyzing the existing environment, but it helps us facilitate um, that knowledge of, of what's existing into more of a virtual environment and then be able to you know, build on top of that. We've heard, Edwin, we've heard a lot about digital twins mentioned during the show. What is a digital twin from a construction standpoint? And how do you use it? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of an evolving, um, process here. So it, it, in my, I mean, in layman's terms, it's, it's like a video game with real time, real world uh, data from the physical environment. If that makes sense. You know, it's, it's a cross between the cyber and the physical uh, with that data in between. So. Chris, do, does the, do the needs of like Scanska USA and other companies along this line, does that give your students new avenues for jobs besides just looking for a job at a TV station or a production company? This has got to open up new avenues for them. Yes, it's an introduction to a new tool that can be used in many ways. And for the student, the introduction is using it for cinematography and videography. But then they slowly start to learn that that machine can be used for far more uses. How long, Chris, does it take to get certified to use this? If someone 
you know, maybe, you know, a lot of people have been laid off because of COVID or maybe they were in the oil industry and they lost their job and they're looking to get into something new. And they're thinking drones are everywhere. I want to learn to fly one. How quickly can we get someone skilled, certified and out there in the job market? It's uh, directly tied to personal application, Todd. It's uh, the FAA test is not very difficult. What they ask for us to learn are to read weather reports, to understand uh, weather conditions. And it makes me as a ground pilot understand what the actual aerial pilot is faced with so that uh, I can I can operate safely because the man in the sky, he comes first. Edwin, our licensed drone pilots in high demand for your company and your industry can you always find them and can you get enough of them yeah i mean we we have a a drone uh national drone service within skanska but oftentimes you know we reach out to third parties and uh you know if we if we can't manage the you know, the, the workload essentially for the use case of the drones, but, you know, we encourage everybody to be licensed. And are they utilized? I mean, are the job possibilities, if someone gets licensed in this, um, are they growing possibilities in your industry? Uh, if they're a contractor, is it easy for them to find work um, from your standpoint, looking at how much you use them? Yeah, I think, I think so. I mean, you, you definitely, they're, you're going to use a drone a lot on a project. There's there's tons of use case scenarios. I mean, we could talk for quite a long time, but there is a lot of opportunity out there in different ways of using a drone. Chris, how long um, does it take someone to learn the skills that they'd need to work for a construction company as opposed if they're surveying areas for oil companies? Is it all the same technology or do they have to take special training to go work for Skanska or say, you know, Aramco? It will be pretty much the same training, Todd. Uh, what you want to do is you want to make sure that the drone is is uh, where you want it to be at all times. If you can do that, then you will make it in all applications. I know when we uh, use uh, drones here at HCC TV, we have a couple of folks who are licensed and they always go out with the person who's flying the drone and then a spotter. Is that standard in the industry, Chris? Yes, you should use a spotter. Um, right now, the FAA regulations only allow for a human spotter. You cannot use a um, an optic, for instance. You couldn't use a camera to watch your drone. You need another physical being. Gentlemen, uh, we're about to run out of time. I want to thank you all for being here. Ruben Duran, uh, of course, uh, Edwin Bailey and Chris Kimball. Chris, it's always good to see you. Thank you all for being here and updating us on this new technology. If you're interested in these programs, we'll have some information and social media posts for the show afterwards. I'm Todd Duplantis. You're watching the topic. Hey, we're live every Tuesday at 1 p.m. right here on Facebook Live and YouTube. Thanks for being here. I'll see you next week.